The grave of notorious criminal John Dillinger is seeing new interest after his reported death in 1934. Two of Dillinger's relatives want his gravesite exhumed because they believe the body buried in it is not Dillinger. With more on this, I want to bring in Derry Matera. He is the author of John Dillinger, The Life and Death of America's First Celebrity Criminal. He joins me today from Chandler, Arizona. Good morning. Glad you could be with us. Thank you. It's hot uh, here. Can, can you, it's, yes, I'm sure it is. Um, can you give us a- Global uh, warming in the desert. Here. Yeah, we just had a conversation about that uh, before I the saw break. That, yeah. So, Derry, give us a quick recap. For those who don't know John Dillinger's crimes, how did he go on to become such an infamous character in American history? Well, John Dillinger lived in an era when there was uh, no TV and radio and newspapers were really big. So, his exploits as a bank robber across the country, coast to coast, got bigger and bigger and bigger until he became a big cult hero, just for robbing banks in the Depression when everybody was mad at the banks. So what happened to him? What happened to him in the scheme of his life, or how did he die? How or? did he die, ultimately? What was the end oh, for yeah. John Dillinger? Uh, the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, built the FBI on the back of John Dillinger. He frightened America, saying we need a national police force. So he formed it to catch John Dillinger and other bank robbers like Babyface Nelson and, and people like that. So they tracked him down and began to follow him and infiltrate his gang, and they finally got him in Chicago. And how did it come to be that there is now this question about whether or not those are, in fact, his remains in that grave? Well, he had planned, John Dillinger famously had a plastic surgery before his death to try to change his look. And he was planning to go to Mexico. He had plans to have someone stand in and uh, doubles for him. So this was all in the works, and people uh, people knew about it, and they thought he might have put that in action and found some sucker to, to die for him. Wow. So what do you think? <laughs> I, think uh, I think the FBI got him. I think they okay. tracked him down. They did infiltrate his gang. They had his girlfriend. They had his girlfriend's madam. And they knew where he was. So he's in. it's John Dillinger in the grave. The thing about people like, you know, these conspiracy theories that everybody's still alive, Elvis is alive, John Kennedy, Marilyn Monroe, they're all on an island somewhere, is the rumor. It's a good urban legend, and it's a good story, and it happens. But people like this, they can't stay hidden that long. You know, if you're Elvis, you're not going to be just some schmo afterward. If you're John Dillinger was a huge star, he had a big ego. He would say after a couple of years, he'd come back and say, ha, 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 I fooled you from Mexico. I, I do want to ask you, because the grave that he is in is encased in three feet of concrete. Um, why was that decision made at the time? Well, he was so famous and so well known. I mean, the subtitle of my book was The First Celebrity mm -hmm. Criminal. So he was so famous and so well known, people would go to his grave site, chip away at the gravestone. They chipped it down to the bone a few times. It had to be replaced. So the fear was that a bunch of drunken fans and people and partiers were going to dig, actually dig him up as a souvenir. As yeah. a souvenir. Wow. His body as a souvenir. Oh my goodness. Well, We'll see what happens next. Uh, Derry Matera, he is the author of John Dillinger, The Life and Death of America's First Celebrity Criminal. Appreciate your time and stay cool. Thank you.